This is KGW News at 5. First at 5, a plea from the Portland Police Bureau to drivers and pedestrians, be careful. Good evening, I'm Laurel Porter. 2021 has been the deadliest year on Portland roads in decades. As Mike Bennett reports, police staffing and speeding are contributing factors. Southeast Holgate is one of Portland's most dangerous roads. In fact, the city's identified it as a high crash corridor. Not at all a surprise to one guy who's familiar with the area. No, I try not to walk around here too often. It's not unsafe. I just, it's not the most comfortable neighborhood. For proof, just look at what happened in October. A motorcyclist was killed near Southeast 97th in Holgate. One of 62 deadly crashes in Portland this year, the most in three decades. It's pretty sad what's going on and how many families are being impacted on both sides of these crashes. Sergeant Ty Engstrom is with the Portland Police Bureau's Traffic yep. Division. He says of the 62 people killed in crashes this year, 26 of them were pedestrians, the most in four decades, and that number could very well climb. Now we still have a whole month of December left, unfortunately. This is the wet, dark, rainy time of year, and unfortunately we do get a number of pedestrian fatalities this time of year. If you ask Sergeant Engstrom why there has been a record-setting number of deadly crashes, he'll point to two things, starting with staffing. At the beginning of 2021, staffing levels in the Portland Police Bureau were so low that they had to dismantle the almost the entire traffic division. Sergeant Engstrom says another factor is more drivers speeding due to less congestion on the roads. Officers have no problem sitting out there and getting someone 25 to 30 miles an hour over the speed limit and only having to wait a few seconds before they find that person. Sergeant Engstrom fears it could get worse on Portland roadways before it gets better. A troubling outlook for those who call the Rose City home. I don't like the idea of traffic accidents at all. We'll see what the city can do about it. Seeing as she oversees Portland's Bureau of Transportation, we did reach out to City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty for comment. She, of course, is troubled and saddened by the high number of deaths, but points out only about half of them happened on Peabot controlled streets. Those numbers are consistent with years past and prove that the work she and her team are doing is working. That includes investing about a half million dollars in rapid safety improvements in the city's highest crash corridors. Reporting in Southwest Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Oregon Governor Kay Brown has announced a winter special session aimed at preventing people from being evicted from their homes this winter. She wants lawmakers to start on December 13th, two weeks from today, to work on eviction protections for renters. She said federal money will nearly run out tomorrow, and she wants lawmakers to work on new ways to protect renters using state money. The governor also wants to extend the safe harbor, which keeps people from being evicted if they've applied for rental assistance and ensure that landlords are still getting paid. Our team on the story is digging into this story. Maggie Vespa's here now. Maggie, the state's nearly out of rental assistance. I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? Oregon actually got $289 million in rental assistance from the feds, and the governor says it's all going to be pretty much gone tomorrow, December 1st. So she's asking the feds for more. And while that plays out, it'll take time. Applications for rent assistance continue to pour in, officials say. And a lot of the people who have been approved for that help still haven't physically gotten their checks yet or their landlords haven't. Some have been waiting for several months. The state earlier this year passed a safe harbor law that Laurel just talked about, protecting anyone who's applied for rent assistance from getting evicted for the next 60 days while they wait Wait for their money. But now advocates want that safe harbor extended. They want it to be longer and they're thrilled. The governor is calling lawmakers together next month. There are so many Oregonians who are really struggling right now. And as we enter the winter and our coldest months, we really uh, know that it's essential that no additional evictions are allowed to happen when rent assistance is on the way. 
We're also talking to landlords. I just spoke to a landlord's advocate a few minutes ago about their take on this, what they want out of the special session. Hear from them at six on the story. And a key reminder here, the state is actually pausing the rent assistance process for six weeks to give staff time to catch up on all of those applications. That pause begins tomorrow night at midnight. So if you haven't applied for rent assistance and you need it, they say absolutely do that now. We have details on our website. And again, we'll have more on the story at six. We look forward to seeing you at six o'clock. Thank you, Maggie. Sure. Former State Representative Akasha Lawrence Spence has been appointed to the Oregon State Senate. She's filling out the remainder of State Senator Ginny Burdick's term in District 18. Burdick resigned at the end of the last session when Governor Brown appointed her to the Northwest Power and Conservation Council. This is the second time Akasha Lawrence Spence has been appointed to fill a vacant seat. In 2019, she filled Jennifer Williamson's seat in Oregon House District 36. Lauren Spence is also running for Portland City Council. Health officials say it is just a matter of time until the Omicron variant reaches the U.S. and they say you need to take precautions now. The variant has been detected in 20 countries so far. There are not currently any cases in the U.S., but experts expect that to change soon. The CDC is now recommending everyone 18 and older who got vaccinated at least six months ago get a booster shot. Vaccines, and particularly boosters, give a level of antibody that even with variants like Delta, give you a degree of cross protection, particularly against severe disease. Experts say it will take about two weeks to know how severe the Omicron variant is and how effective the current vaccines are. If needed, new vaccines could be ready in about three months. Oregon is developing a new digital vaccine card, giving people a tool to prove they're vaccinated. State officials say it will be optional and handy for those who don't have a doctor. KGW's Pat Doris reports. Right now in Oregon, no state law or rule requires proof of a COVID vaccination before you enter a restaurant or other businesses. But those businesses are free to create their own rules, and many have. Jason Brandt is president and CEO of the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association. Are a lot of restaurants and businesses requiring it for people to come in? It's quite a mixed bag out there. Want to attend a Blazers game or a concert at the Motor Center? You'll have to prove vaccination or a recent negative test. The publication Eater recently listed more than 100 bars and restaurants where proof is also required which may be one reason the Oregon Health Authority is creating a digital vaccine card and corresponding verification system, which will be voluntary and free for anyone in the state. The OHA's public health director, Rachel Banks, showed lawmakers samples at a recent hearing. What we'd have is a user who would request to get their vaccine records using things like name, date of birth, telephone number, email. A person would be sent a smart health card. That's the image there in the middle of the screen. It would have a QR code that would hold information about the vaccination status. They could then show that to a business, and the business person would have a way to verify that it was accurate. Banks expects it to be out this spring. Our overall will clearly work through the new year in terms of uh, continuing that testing and communications, and I intend to launch in, in March. A similar system is already available in Washington State, where King County does require proof of vaccination to dine indoor or attend sporting events and other activities. Mary Carrillo with the American Immunization Registry Association told Oregon lawmakers that nine states now offer smart cards and 20 more, including Oregon, have projects in the works. And really the goal is to create one consolidated record for every individual within a jurisdiction. The idea is not unique. Apple has a way to store your vaccine information on your phone. And a lot of us simply have pictures of our vaccination cards there as well. Brandt from the Restaurant Association wonders if it's really a waste of time and money. It really feels to me, especially when you go to large events and the cell towers are overloaded, uh, with activity, I'm not sure that anything other than a photo on your phone, which so many of us already have, is, is really necessary to, to fully verify your vaccine status. Pat Doris, KGW News.